All right. Today we start a new topic, insertion sort, part E of our module four. Here we will use divide and conquer approach to do three sorting algorithms: insertion sort, merge sort, and quick sort. So this part we will do insertion sort. Part E point one: introduction to insertion sort. First, a brief introduction. Yeah. Here, a lot of information I already、uh, explained before, so I will go a little faster. First, the name, based on our textbook, it is called decrease and conquer. Yeah, but it is just a special case of divide and conquer. So I still I like to use the general usual. A、uh, very popular name, divide and conquer, because in this way I do not need to explain what's the meaning of divide and conquer, right? Otherwise, if I use decrease and conquer, I need to explain. So, what do you really mean, decrease and conquer, right? But from the name, you can guess. The size is reduced by decreasing the size number. Yeah. So whatever, yeah. So let's just look at the content first.、Yeah. All right, here the basic idea: we need to explore the similar situation. When we reduce the problem sizes, usually we have similar situation, right? So we need to explore the similarity between, you know, problem of different. Sizes, size、uh, instances,、uh, instance problem instance, right? Different instance with different sizes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here the question, the main question, how to divide, right? So there are many different ways. Actually, in our several examples we learned before, we learned some some ways to decrease the problem sizes. Right, yeah. Decrease by constant. We have this case before. Decrease by constant. Okay, yeah. Decrease by a constant factor. So what's the difference? Decrease by constant and a constant factor. Here we do subtraction, right? The problem size. If I use s, s minus constant. So decrease by constant number. Then decrease by constant factor. When you see this factor, we do division, right? Yeah. So s over constant c decrease by a constant factor.、Yeah. And another one, variable size decrease. GCD greatest common divisor. That example we decrease by variable size. All right. Yeah, because、uh, all these cases just basically divide and conquer. So why we create a new name, right? So I think we do not need to use a new name. So let's still call it divide and conquer. Yeah. Next, we need to look at the implementation. Okay. The first question: recursive or non-recursive? This issue I already explained it before, so here I want to go a little faster. Yeah. So we don't need to, you know, talk about this issue another time. Yeah. Yeah. So here, because when we、uh, create, when we develop relationship for our problem between. Two different sizes. Usually, we have a recursion formula. But when we implement recursion formula, we have two options. We have two options.、Yeah. The first option, natural recursive way. Second option, iterative way. And we learned the difference. I actually I spent a lot of time before. About the advantage and the disadvantage. The reason 
For the iterative way, we can use less storage space. Well, so I I do not go more on that explanation. Yeah. All right, but how to do that iterative implementation? So usually we do the bottom up approach. Bottom up approach. Because we don't want to use the recursive way. When we use the iterative way, how do we avoid recursion, right? How do we avoid recursion? Bottom up way. We start from problem with very small sizes. Yeah. Starting with a solution to the smallest instance of the problem. From there, we do iterations by increasing the problem sizes gradually. Okay, yeah. So, iteratively solve large instance of problem incremental way. Yeah. All right. Okay. So with that, so we treat as we recall our old experience. So now. Let us work on this insertion sort. The sorting problem we work, we did several methods. But here, let us try a new method, insertion sort. Strategy, same old strategy. Start with a simple case, right? Then grow the data size gradually. Yeah. For this particular situation, we every time we increase the problem size by one, one by one, that way. Okay, yeah. All right, so the question how to connect two adjacent cases. If we can do that, we pretty much we solve the problem. All right, so let's work on the solution analysis part. Yeah. Just by our intuition, yeah. when we start, let's work on the smallest problem size. Okay, yeah. here I use arrow brackets that represent our array has one element. So this time the problem size array has one element. Then we need to add a new element into it. One old element, one new element, adding together, so the problem size equals two, s equals two for this case. Okay. In other words, how do we saw, sort an array with two elements? That's the problem. How do we sort an array with two elements. It's easy, right? By one comparison, you can sort it. Yeah. But here, we will use size incremental understanding to look at this problem. Okay, Size incremental way to understand this problem. Yeah. All right. Here, you can see we insert A1 into the existing Sorting array. Can we treat this one element array as a sorting array? Yes, it is sorted. Yeah, ordered. Yeah. So insert into a ordered array. That's easy. Yeah. One comparison. You know how to arrange a zero, a one elements. Okay. All right. Let's move to the next. We increase the problem size by one. This time. Our current array has two elements and they have the increasing order. Yeah, increasing order. Yeah. But this time we want to insert a two into the ordered array. Yes. Uh, how many comparisons do we need to get the whole array sorted? You can see. You know, pretty easy, right? Intuition by our intuition, pretty straightforward. Yeah. 
but we may like to consider the general case. For the general case, we add a new element to currently sorted array, like this, yeah, with k elements. But we need to insert a new element into that ordered array. So that's the reason we call it insertion sort, because the main step, basically, it is just the insertion, right? So the insertion step. All right, so now our observation. So let us summarize the procedure a little bit. So our observation is insert an element in a sorted array at the right position. Every insertion step, we just do this at the right position. Okay, every step, we just do this. Yeah. If you can do insertion steps like this all the way to get to the original problem size, you solve the problem. All right. So here, next, let me show you how to do insertion step in the details. Yeah. So let's look at this. So now we have this situation. Let's look at our general insertion step. Yeah. Basically, we need to do two things for the insertion step, for the insertion sort. Okay. The first step, we need to find the right position for the current element to be inserted in the existing ordered array. Find the right position, the first step. Second step, do that insertion by making movements on some of the elements. We need to adjust, change positions of some of the elements to mix a room for the new element. New element, you, you need to give some room, right? One location. Yeah. So that kind of manipulation, we need to do it in our second step. Then we, we complete the whole insertion step. All right. Then, now, let's look at the analysis of this insertion step a little bit. When we implement insertion operation, yeah. first question, how to find correct position for the new element? By intuition, it's easy, right? Yeah. Do comparison one by one. We can find it, the right position. Yeah. Second, how to move elements to make the new array sorted? By intuition, we can do, you know, element shift operation to get a job done. Yeah. Yeah. In the, this diagram, so we we do like this, yeah. All right, yeah. Sorted array, insert a new element into it. Doing these two steps. What is the number of basic operations? Yeah. If we just use the asymptotic notation, big theta of k. Right, big theta of k. So we do not need to use some very precise expression here, just asymptotic notation. So it is big theta of k. Yeah. But if I really, I like to ask you, what is the average case efficiency? Can we say k over 2? k over 2 will be a very close estimate. May not be exact, right? May not be exact. It is pretty close. So this one, very close to the answer, but may not be the exact. Yeah. So what is the exact number? Okay, yeah, yeah. Later, I may use some concrete examples 
to explain the exact average case number. Now, later, if I have chance, I will show you how to do, do that. All right. Now, let's move to the detail implementation. I use diagram to show you the shifting elements for insertion. So you can see the implementation in a clear way. Yeah. Shift elements to the right. Yeah. How do we manipulate the elements when we start? For example, we want to insert element AK to currently ordered array, yeah, like this, with K elements. Yeah. We need to find the right position, but at the same time, we need to do shifting operations. So we want to combine these two steps in our implementation at the same time. Okay. Compare and shift, compare and shift, you know, one, the other one alternatively, right? In that way, alternative way. Okay, yeah, here. So look, look at the work. When we start, let's assume the right position is here. Okay, so that's the right position. Right position. Okay, yeah. Uh, assume, yeah. how do we do the insertion? With this assumption, yeah. first we lift the last element in the ordered array, A sub K, oh, yeah, yeah, because actually, yeah, we assume this part ordered, okay, this part ordered, but not include the last element, right? Not including this one. But we need to fix it, right? Yeah, we need to fix at this position, A sub K. So we lift it. What, what, what do you mean lift it? We copy this element to a temporary location, temporary variable. After we copy A K in a temporary location, then this location is vacant. This one is vacant. So we can shift other elements to this location. All right, so then we do compare and shift operation. The first comparison, if a sub k minus one is greater than a sub k, then we shift it to the, it's at the adjacent right location, at the adjacent right location, okay? The first one. Second, compare and shift operation. Compare with a k, if it's greater than AK, we shift it to its right adjacent location, and so on. So we do that all the way to the, finally, we get to the right position, A sub K plus one, right? Yeah, and do the shift, all right? Compare and shift. After that, we have one vacant location. After that, we we finally, we get to the right vacant location for the current element AK, then the last step, we copy AK to this vacant location, right spot. Then we complete the insertion operation. How simple it is, right? How simple it is, you know, all right? Yeah, but this is just a one insertion step. Then we can move to the next insertion step, right? Another insertion step, gradually increase the problem sizes until we reach the problem of given size. We solve the whole problem. So you see, yeah, that's the whole procedure. But for the analysis part, I leave to the next video. We will do the, you know, total number of comparisons for the whole insertion sort.
So I leave to the next video. Yeah. So for this video here, we just if we just estimate the number of assignments, we use asymptotic notation bit theta of k. Bit theta of k. The precise number we will do that in our next video. Okay? Next video. So we will estimate more precise numbers. Yeah. All right, so let me finish E.1 video right here. Yeah.